Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata in Barcelona. I'm here with Ted Dunning and Ellen Friedman. Folks, how you doing? We're doing great. Doing great and thrilled to be in Barcelona. My first time here, it's beautiful. Yes, and so how's the event for you? The event's been really good. A lot of traffic and a lot of excitement about these O'Reilly publications we've been putting out. I just, uh, people here are really enthusiastic in general. I think that they're getting a lot out of the talks. Um, I'm hearing a lot of good comments as people are coming back through the, the booth and coming for the book signing as well. Actually, Ellen, how long did the 20 minute book signing last for you yesterday? <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, the morning break 30 minute uh, book signing lasted until I think about uh, four o'clock. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yesterday afternoon, just, we never had a break. So. And that was the same book here? It was the same book, yes. I ran off for 10 minutes and grabbed some food and came back, and there was still a line. So, and so tell us, good. what is in this book? Well, Ellen's been laying out a series of these books, and she's been bugging me about time series for about a year. And MAPAR recently demonstrated MAPRDB extensions to open TSDB that extended its performance to over 100 million data points of ingestion per second. But those techniques are not PhD work. They're really relatively simple. With good foundations and good tools, anybody can do that. And so that fits perfectly into this series of small books we've been doing. The goal is something yeah. that somebody can digestible. consume. Yeah, 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 digestible, absolutely. And yet still makes a big difference. And so this one is the latest in that series of pragmatic, practical things. Not so much machine learning in this one, but a foundation for machine learning, certainly. And the others have been foundational as well. There's um, particularly a growing interest in time series uh, data and time series databases, and I'm predicting that in 2015 there's just going to be an explosion. Because it's something, it's not a new idea, it's something people have done, but to be able to do it now at the scale that's required, especially for sensor data, part of the Internet of Things and so forth. There's just a growing interest, and so people who haven't been doing it before are, are jumping into that. And that's why we chose this topic. Uh, the book, I know a couple of people ask us if it's specific to uh, uh, to MAPAR, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's not. Uh, it's written, we, we advise people to use a NoSQL database, and so the things that we describe can be done on Apache H base or on the MAPR database, which work in a similar way, uh, the performance numbers that we quote, you would get those performance numbers with uh, MAPR. With you, yeah. you wouldn't get quite the same performance, but everything else we describe can be done in, in both. And we try to give people, this is not about analysis of time series data. Uh, that's for another another book, another topic. Uh, this is how to build, collect the data, build a really efficient database, the design of the database, how to use an open source tool, as Ted said, open TSDB, to access the data in a very efficient way. Excellent. So, and your prior book, just to, it was like two months ago, I mean, you guys yes. are <laughs> turning these out, and that was anomaly detection? Or? Yes. That yeah, was we, we did a, a really fun book on anomaly detection. There's been a lot of developments recently in the machine learning aspects that make certain kinds of anomaly detection really easy to do really easy to implement and get going. In fact, the examples, I was able to code up and get running on a Saturday afternoon for, for instance, the main uh, anomaly detection for EKGs that we demonstrate in there. And so that's, that's, again, one of these leverage points where there's something new that isn't well known, but it is easily distributable to a wide number of people. Who can really yeah, really yeah. important. Uh, anomaly detection is more and more and more important as people measure more and more things more widely. Excellent. And then prior to that, did you have one too? That was the one that was the most fun. Okay. Uh, that book was about, uh, I think it was called Innovations in Recommendation, but it was about how to build a very simple but very powerful uh, recommender, uh, as Ted once said, using things you can find around the house, <laughs> but seriously using uh, some very simple techniques that Ted developed and exploiting search technology uh, for implementation. And we also uh, approach that from the point of view that before people get down into the details or, or any of the little bit of, of, of matrix algebra, is that the ideas are completely accessible, even if you're not the person who has the, the deep experience in it. And so it has a very playful uh, introduction which starts with the premise, uh, I want a pony, and most people want a pony too. <laughs> and what does that tell you about how to recommend things to people? And so, yes, we had a lot of fun with that and, and a lot of fun with the action. I'd like to correct you. She, 
The title is Recommendations. <laughs> the book is called The Pony Book the pony because book. you guys chose a great cover. It's oh, got great. a white pony on the cover. Pony, yeah, yeah, it really yeah. worked out yeah. well. And then, so you have one in the future coming that we know of, and there's probably more, but. Yes, there are actually about five other titles that we had uh, looked at potentially to continue this practical machine learning series. Um, pro but we, we stopped to do this one and the one on uh, use cases uh, from the field. But we'll probably, some of the upcoming titles, shall I mention, uh, would have to do with a, a one with a, again, a, a simple and pragmatic approach to deep learning. I call it, you know, dipping your toe in the deep learning pool, <laughs> not going very far in. And uh, Ted has uh, uh, talked in a couple of situations, and I think uh, people might like to hear more, uh, about which algorithms really matter. How to, not just the particular al algorithms that again fit this pragmatic approach, but what are the kinds of decisions that you want to take to find things where you get the best return for the effort as you go into these new technologies as, as a kind of a general approach. So I think those are two titles that we'll probably pursue. Excellent. Hopefully we'll find some uh, creature that lives really deep in the ocean. Oh, I think I, we can, I like that we can find that as a, <laughs> an animal maybe. <laughs> Ted and Ellen, thank you so much for all you're doing here and for being at our events. It's great. Thank you, what a pleasure. Thank you.